You can drag and drop an application into the deploy directory of your server configuration in order to deploy it into the JBoss application server. Uh, if you notice here, I have the application server running. If I come into my, uh, I'm using Windows here, if I come into the Windows uh, Explorer, I can drag a WAR file that I have here, a web application archive, and I'll drag it and I will put it into the default deploy directory. And I'll just go ahead and drop it in there. And if I come back to my application server console, I'll see that it gives me a little message that says deploy and the context path equals hello. The context path is dynamically um, generated based on the name of the web application archive that was deployed. You can undeploy an application from the application server by just dragging and dropping it out if you have a um, GUI-based operating system available to you. So in this case I have hello.war in the default deploy directory and if I just drag and move this out it will undeploy and if I go back to my console you'll see that I get a nice little message that says undeploy and shows me the context path that was undeployed. You can also deploy an application by doing a command line copy so in this case I have my war file sitting in uh, sitting in C colon backslash and I can deploy that to my application server by uh, doing a copy or a move of the file into the application server. So here I say move hello.war to jboss 501 ga slash server slash default slash deploy and if I do that and come back here you see that my application server did a deployment again and if I do the reverse and move it back out you'll see that the application server does an undeploy. Another way to deploy an application is using the JMX console. If you go to pull up a web browser and go to localhost colon 8080 slash jmx dash console you'll pull up the JMX console and then here on the left hand column you can find an object name called jboss.system. If you click on jboss.system you'll find a service called service equals main deployer. If you click on that you'll see that uh, there's a JMX bean here and it displays all the attributes and operations that are available to it and if you scroll down you'll find a, an attribute called deploy. Now there's actually going to be several of these uh, with the name deploy but the one that you want is one that takes an argument of, uh, of type string. So if you scroll down a little further, it's, kind of, it's the second or third one here is the second one. So if you point this to the, uh, to the war file that you want to deploy or the archive that you want to deploy and you click on invoke, you'll get a message back that says operation completed successfully without a return value. Then if you go into your uh, console view you'll see that you'll see two lines of output here. One that says main deployer deploy URL and it gives you the file equals the path that you deployed it from and then you get the standard Tomcat deploy uh, message uh, on the second line. The, uh, the caveat here with deploying through the JMX console is that the JMX um, console doesn't uh, actually do a copy of the file, it loads it into a temp directory. Uh, so once you restart the application server, your application would no longer be uh, running. So you would have to, if you wanted it to load up when you start the application server, you have to make sure that you do a file copy and, and deploy it into the deploy directory for your server configuration. Uh, there is also in the uh, JBoss system menu there's a uh, an undeploy feature but I can't seem to get that to work at all with uh, JBoss 501. Uh, if anybody can I'd appreciate some feedback on how you got it to work but I, I tried uh, several things and read through forums and just couldn't get that to work. Another way that you can deploy applications is if you go into the JBoss 501GA slash bin directory there's a utility in there called Twiddle, and you can use the Twiddle utility to 
to invoke a beam the same way you did through the JMX console. So here you see we're invoking jboss.system colon service equals main deployer. Then we're calling deploy, which was the operation. And then we provide the value, which was the uh, web application archive we wanted to deploy. So if I run this and then go to the console, you'll see that it gives me the same output as when I went through the uh, JMX console to do the same thing. And again, it's the same caveat that the application won't be there when you restart the application server. The benefit of having a tool like Twiddle is that if you have scripts that you want to execute that can start and stop uh, applications, then you can use Twiddle to programmatically deploy applications into the application server. Aside from deploying just an archive file into the application server, JBoss also allows you to deploy what's called an exploded or expanded directory structure. So if you look over here, we have a directory structure called uh, with the name hello.war as the top level directory, and the contents under there are the same as what you would find in a web application archive. Now, if we wanted to deploy this into the application server, what you could do is essentially move the entire uh, directory structure into the deploy directory the same way it, that we would do a copy of the uh, archive file to, to deploy it. Now I use the word move um, on purpose here because if you actually do a file system copy what happens is that it's, it's not necessarily atomic depending on the operating system that you're using so the copy operation might copy uh, the single files at a time and what happens is that there's a particular directory for each archive type that JBoss recognizes and when that when it detects that that file has been updated or is available then that's when it triggers JBoss to actually deploy the application in the case of a web application that file is actually the web.xml file so for example if I had a lot of files in my uh, archive and I tried to do a copy and it got to the point where it copied the web.xml file before it copied a bunch of the resources or Java files for my application then I could get into a uh, funky state where it uh, has only copied half the files and it can't really load my web application and I can get into trouble there so would you, if you want to do a, a hot deployment which is where you're doing a deployment while the server's still up and running um, you, you probably want to do a file system uh, move operation, which is a little safer. So in this case, we'll go ahead and uh, I'll just do a copy right now since it's, it's a very small uh, archive. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy the hello.war expanded directory into the deploy directory for the server. And after I do that, I'll pull up my console and see that it went ahead and deployed the application into the application server. In order to demonstrate the reloading of an application by touching the uh, deployment descriptor, I'll go ahead and touch the file, the web.xml file for the hello uh, application that we deployed in, in exploded directory form into the application server and we'll see what happens. So if I come into the web inf directory and take a look there's a web.xml file here and if I do a, a touch web.xml it should uh, touch as a unix command that will update the timestamp uh, of the file to the latest uh, to the current system time or it will create a file if the file doesn't exist so if I do a touch web.xml and come back into my console here I see that it did an undeploy and a deploy of the application and I can do it again and see that it it'll re-trigger it after a few seconds. The benefit of using an exploded directory structure while you're doing development is that you can actually add files, uh, especially uh, static uh, content files like images or uh, HTML pages or PDF files into the exploded directory structure while the application is still running and those files can then be served by your application. 